remember when I hosted the Joan Rivers Comedy Central Rose. I remember Joan wanted me to do it because we were pals. And I think she thought in this Hunger Games environment, mm. maybe you can sort of protect me. And I did get to tell a couple like sort of heartfelt moments with her and stuff. But it was definitely weird. The jokes that were pitched to me written by dudes and they were all dry vagina jokes. And yeah. Joan was already doing them about herself. And that's already funnier. But I remember people canceling. I don't know if you remember this, but they always canceled last minute. Uh, Lily Tomlin canceled. Mm -hmm. And I actually called her up and I was like, look, some of the big names are canceling. Is that how I got on it? <laughs> no, but Joan was like, I don't want all people I don't really know very well. Yeah. I've been around so long. And this is before Roseanne went QAnon, but Roseanne was still Roseanne and Roseanne canceled. And I called Lily and I said, do you think you can come? Like Joan kind of really wants you to be there. And, and Lily said this thing that always stuck with me. And she goes, don't you think Joan's been roasted enough? And I really did feel dirty doing that roast. I really did. I and didn't. I, mean, I didn't know. And I had no idea. For me, it was like paycheck. For me, it was if you're here, you must want to be here. Right, right. I had no clue. I had no. Well, remember, they go, it's an homage. And Joan kept saying afterwards, she's like, yeah, they kept telling me it was an honor. She's like, oh, yeah, an honor. But I remembered that Lily saying. And I thought, yeah. I was too young at the time to know like, oh, sometimes people have to put themselves in humiliating situations, mm -hmm. either to pay a tax bill or to yeah. stay relevant. Having been in the writer's room of the roast before, mm -hmm. we would write all these jokes and then the producer would say, you can't say that. You the, you know, the daughter's off limits. Yeah. Remember, it was like uh, for Shatner, the dead wife in the pool was off limits. Yeah. For There was always like an off limits. You know, right. for Joan, it was uh, her daughter Melissa, and Cooper yeah. as, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was like we had to abide by all these rules. Yeah. So by the time we got there, I was kind of like, oh, I guess this is all yeah. above board, you mm -hmm. know. And also that it's actually really nice the structure of those where they got their comeback at the end yeah and whether it was a Shatner that was going to do written material or a Joan that wanted to write her own like that was always the saving grace of the whole thing yeah and luckily Joan was such a crusher her set really did do better than everybody's of period you of know? course and it, it crushed me when I watched her documentary piece of work and yeah. she was like in the limousine talking about how much she was dreading it yeah how humiliating it was how as female comedians you know people want to see us you know shit on and denigrated yeah. and they don't want to see us shine and they don't want to see us win. And I was like, oh, my God, like it really yeah. I, I was embarrassed, you know, but then it was like, you know, I did Hasselhoff after that. Um, well, yeah. Fair. Yeah, and, Come on. Like, but, I just I just don't think David Hasselhoff cried for two days. I, I just don't. 100 percent. I just don't see that. 100 percent. I'm saying do it feels yeah. like, you know, it was. um yeah, I just, in my head at the time, it was like, Joan doesn't do anything Joan doesn't want to do. Like, but I'm just saying, like, in the 90s and aughts, we did not have that sense of Hasselhoff, fair. This person, eh, yep. not really. Yep. But it was kind of like, who's ever hot? Who's yep. ever game? Yep. And I, I think we're getting better about that. Mm -hmm. Look, I have to be told, I don't mean to sound like in those days, but I do have to be told sometimes like what not to say and everything. Yeah. I welcome it. Yeah. Because I don't want somebody leaving in tears. Yeah, I don't yeah. want somebody that goes home and goes, wow, I went to a comedy show to have fun and this happened, you know, or whatever. And we play rough. You know, it's funny. I try to explain to my younger friends the the vibe in the 90s and the aughts. Mm. You almost had to live through it to yeah. even get it. It's wild. And that the edict to comedians was to be the most vicious possible. Mm -hmm. And look, we called it roasting. Yeah. And it was the assignment. And it's so I look back on my specials or whatever, and of course, like, I wouldn't say half the stuff I said then, because I'll do the women thing, because that's what I feel guilt about. But we were making fun of girls, girls, women that were multi, multi-millionaires, right. genetically blessed beauties. At the time, it didn't feel like punching down. No, it was punching. It was By the like, way, it was punching up. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I mean, Leno, Letterman, all of it. It'd be like, who's going to do the Lindsay joke tonight? Right. Who's going to do the Paris joke? We didn't realize we were, you know, traumatizing someone right. or nobody understood the trauma of fame like no we didn't one didn't have the word no one trauma. at the time that was used for like er nurses 100 that's it 